Hey folks, how are you? This is Sanjeev from Venus Laboratories and today I am going to show you a neat little trick that will help you in many of your robotics competitions whether they are first Lego league or otherwise. So one of the problems that we have seen very recently or I should say in the last seven or uh, eight years uh, in the especially in the first Lego league competition is that you are given uh, a problem where your robot has to go and pick certain items and bring them back to the base or it has to move them from one location to the another. In general, you are asked to bring something back and then deliver to a different location and the, on the board. So what they all look like is this. So there is a flat base at the bottom and then you have a loop at the top. Uh, they call it the handle. These come in various shapes and sizes, but they all have the same structure and shape. That is, there is a bit of a heavy and solid base and then a loop at the top. And what most teams uh, have, have done and what we have seen many, many of the teams doing is uh, the robot actually comes with a unicorn like uh, pointy, um, I guess, stick and it tries to put it in here. So what sometimes what will happen is you will hit the end, sometimes you will hit here, sometimes a little bit too high, sometimes it's a little bit lower. But you try and aim for this area and put it here and then lift this arm somehow and then you move around. And while you're moving around, this thing is jerking around your robot. So uh, depending on your angle, sometimes this is not super like, you know, this is not super properly angled. I should say like this here, like if you have very high angle, then this will be held. If you have a little bit lower angle then while moving around, this will just fall down. So that ha that happens. We have seen teams uh, do this quite often, quite often. And what we realized was there is a much, much simpler solution that you can have uh, instead of having a pointy uh, stick that actually lifts these is that you can have a simpler solution that just uh, works very, very well. Uh, works in spite of you uh, not having perfect alignment uh, and that solution is called the one-way lockbox and uh, the mechanism of a one-way lockbox is that you have a lock that can be locked uh, when something pokes around it so think of them as one-way valves and the easiest way to show this is by showcasing a one-way lockbox so let's remove this for a second and look at this mechanism over here right so understand that this mechanism will be coming from the top and pushing it and uh, so you have this arm that actually can like you know when pushed from the bottom it goes to the top but when from pushed from the top no matter how much you push unless you're ready to break this thing it cannot go in because it, it's being stopped by this other stick or axle that's actually here. This is called a one-way lock box right and this is exactly how one-way valve works including the valves in your heart. I mean they're one way when the blood goes in uh, your heart allows it in but uh, when the blood tries to push back it uh, the blood that has gone out it tries to push back it doesn't it doesn't go in so anyway let's see how this works so you have this thing and uh, let me try and see if i can get a slightly nicer angle while still showcasing this thing and you bring this lockbox from the top of the robot so this is the top of your robot and this is the bottom of the back this is the top of the back this comes in pushes here and pushes 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 boom and this thing is now locked and no matter how much you shake it and try to move it here and there it is not going to fall off because it is locked really really good so this is the simpler version of the lockbox and doesn't require too many pieces and is easily uh, creatable and usable by teams. The other version of this lockbox is a slightly, uh, I would say, slightly more robust version, but requires a lot more pieces. So that one actually looks like this. So you see, it's like a comb-like structure, it's, uh, or I should say, it's a comb from two separate angles, like on each of these sides move. And this thing is spread about, I would say, about an inch, two inch, uh, one and a half to two inches surface area. So when you bring this in, and let's say you bring this here, and it's a little bit harder to show when uh, it's at an angle because that's not how it's supposed to operate. This is gravity fed, as in like it works by the, the gravity C. This pushes, 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 pushes over here, and boom. Now this is locked, and no matter what you try to do, like, you know, shake it, shake it, shake it, it's not going to fall off. It's just not possible for it to fall off. So uh, how, do, how do these things work? Let's go over them one at a time. And let me take this off, and there we go. So let's look at the simpler one. This is actually a model from a, uh, a uh, one of the previous missions and it was actually called, I think, the satellite or some such you had to move. So it was it, it actually had this. And even though the lockbox can cache it no with no problem, it's just a little bit harder to see. So I had removed this piece. So see over here, we do this thing, boom, it just lifts it up. But it's just harder to actually see in the video. So I had removed it off. But uh, understand that this works uh, very, very well. Okay. So moving the bag apart, let's say we'll keep the bag away and let's look at the lockbox. So what is required? One that is required, so forget about the handle. This handle, this handle, the green handle is just there so we can hold it by hand. It's not needed. Ideally, this portion of, your, uh, of, the, uh, of the entire uh, claw or lockbox would be connected to your robot. So how do we do it? Or what are the parts that we need? 
we need two J beams. The reason these are called J beams is pretty obvious because they look like J's, right? And you can search on Bricklink or uh, Brickhub, uh, sorry, Bricklink or Brickall using the name J beam, and you should uh, you should have this here. The nice thing about these things, the important thing to note about these things is there are axle holes at the two edges, right? One over here and one over here. These are super important because back because axle holes. If you put an axle through an axle hole, it gets constrained. It cannot move. It cannot twist. It cannot twist as well as it cannot move. Uh, sideways unless you apply significant amount of force so in uh, this this actually catches on anyway so to create the frame first you what you do is you take a three length three length axle and the reason I call it a three length axle is because everything in Lego uh, or all the uh, technic elements in Lego are created in this units called FLU which is one uh, fundamental Lego unit and what is a one fundamental Lego unit essentially if you look at an element like this right I mean there are holes each one of these holes is essentially called one element length, right? So one uh, FLU. So even the axle hole here is the same length. So one axle hole, one peg hole, one. These are three lengths. And if we take an axle and we place it over here, look at it carefully and see it actually covers exactly three lengths, right? That's why it's called three length. The other cool thing uh, while we are sharing a tip is uh, these axle uh, axles actually come in all the uh, lengths all the way from two length all the way to probably like 16 length except that's around 16 uh, unit uh, units they start looking very bendy so most of the times you see them from around three lengths to about 10 and so uh, the gray ones are usually odd and the black ones are, are usually even even though Abby has also seen axles in colors black and uh, yellow or oh, sorry red and yellow uh, they're not very common though so mostly you get gray and black so anyway, look at this thing, place it at the edge of this thing, uh, put it on the long edge, not the short edge. We need the shorter for another one. And the other one, you can only, you can put it at a 90 degree angle. So now these two are connected, right? And uh, we can, we can put the arm just to showcase here. Let's see, where is our arm, 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 arm. Okay, there we go. And boom, so that is connected, right? So uh, now that that is connected, uh, let's take a look at this one and only use the parts that are needed or create the parts that are needed. So to stop, you all you need is this this part over here, right? This actually stops the arm from coming in, and then you need the part that actually moves around. And so again, it's not super hard to make. What you need to make this one is one. You need to uh, actually let, let's try and make it separately uh, so that we don't have to first we first we create it and then we'll place it on this. So these things are called bushings. Uh, they are also called bushes. Uh, in, in short, uh, this is a full bush as in its length is a uh, one FLU. Oop, it's decided to scroll. Uh, to slide away and there are other ones that are half the length half the width of these things let's take a look and see if you can see it clearly see this is half the width of uh, that one and two of these actually make the width of one gray one right okay so let's take this away so anyway so what you do is you take an axle you stick this uh, this thing here what we are doing really is using this as a spacer right I mean so it just provides space and then we use this part it's part uh, let's see if we can see it a little bit clearly uh, there it has an axle hole on one side and uh, sorry it has a peg hole on one side and the axle hole on the other side so you place it here and when you place it see how it's completely moves that is because uh, this is an axle but the hole in here is a peg hole the peg hole is wider than an axle hole so it just moves around gently and then we are going to put another full bush around this and make sure not to tighten this because if you tighten it too much see now when i move around it doesn't slide back or down so we have to keep it just a hair of space here so it moves very 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 freely so uh that and then finally we need uh yet another let's say axle and where is another axle let's say we take this axle over here and stick it at the edge so this is now like a t-shape right except that this thing actually slides very very easily do that stick it in here at the edge and that that's it that's your thing uh, this one is a bit longer. You should use a small axle here, making sure so in, to ensure that you can actually uh, hook and hook in the loop very easily. But that's pretty much it, right? So this is the core fundamental. Uh, you build the one-way lock mechanisms using these uh, axle and peg hole uh, pieces. Uh, these are called axle. And I think they are called cross blocks or some such. Anyway, that's what you do to create the bigger one, which is uh, a bit bigger, bigger than this one, and is a is is a lot more usable, except that it uses a lot more parts. You need slight more slightly more complexity and i'm going to show you how to make this one as well because uh in reality if i was in the competition i would end up using this one not the other one uh this one is uh, only if you are constrained on parts or you need to create something in a hurry uh okay so let's take a look at this thing so one uh uh the thing that you have to look at this one and be careful about is 
each of the sides I'll, I'll put this one away so you can see it here clearly see uh, there move this one away move this one away and there each one of these arms comes and see its length is not sufficient to go from this edge to the other edge it actually gets constrained on the side because it also needs to open up in the center right like the teeth of a monster so this actually opens up and comes back so what you need to do is you need to have another rod over here an axle over here so this comes and it's sitting on top of this rod on its own side so when something pushes from inside both the sides actually open up and then fall back in i don't need to do that so the mechanism is the same as in this portion is exactly the same you uh, you put a half push so it gets constrained on this axle then you put a uh, this this what is this called uh, the uh, the peg and uh, the peg and axle block you put this one peg and uh, this is the axle and this is the peg peg and axle block uh, so that it can freely move and then you put a tiny little axle at the end the key thing that happens that i should differentiate is one this should not go all the way through a three length axle works awesome for this one uh, the mechanism is repeated exactly on the other side so we are going to only look at this one or this one side so what we do over here is let's say we take this thing over here right uh, and we're going to create just uh, it just on one side one let's say i'm going to take this thing and i'm going to stick this axle over here right so i created an axle now and i, and I understand i'm creating only the one side note that i have to push this axle out slightly so it actually sticks out slightly on the other side and the reason i'm doing is because i am going to be using this little piece uh, there that angle is much better this is just a flat beam it's called on one side it has an axle hole and one side it has a uh, peg hole this is extremely useful the reason it's extremely useful is because i can use this to increase the length of this j beam a little bit now i connected the axle side axle hole side see this is the axle hole side to the axle making sure that it is this whole thing is like you know one continuous line and once i did that here a peg hole opened up for me and there's another axle over here now i take a another axle and this axle has a eight uh, this is an eight length axle it has a uh, what is called end stopper at the end and what this is is a slight circular uh, uh, end uh, usually axles have a plus shape end this one has a flat end what what that allows is if you put it through a axle uh, a, uh, sorry peg hole it comes and gets stuck it cannot slide off okay so we put that and then we are going to take a half bush and push the half half bush on the this one the one that with the, the axle that we had put with the end stop we are going to put it here and push it all the way to the edge so now this is stuck because this half bush is there this cannot slide off so now we have two of these and beyond that the life is much 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 simpler so what we are going to do is take see observe we are going to take one of these sorry one of these that we already had uh, we are going to take a three length uh, axle we are going to stick it over here and then we are going to put it on the black one not the one lower one not the one that's uh, in the on the extended part we are going to take it and place it here inside and see now this cannot go in anymore like this cannot slide in all the way it, it comes up over here and then it falls it gets stuck on the second axle and then what we're going to do is like you know we're going to place a uh, a bush on this uh, make sure this is not too tight so it keeps on like you know, going up and down gently and then we're going to put another one of this over here then put another half bush just like uh, over here see like this one half bush then uh, one of these arms that, that that is able to move up and down then the second one half bush second arm half bush third arm and repeat the exact same thing except that you, you should make sure that a little bit of spacing is left so that they form like you know form they form shape like i should say what this they should not be going on top of each other because that would negate what we're trying to do they should be a little bit like this and that's what this is doing if you observe and that's it i mean take a look at this one even though we have all this paraphernalia here right i mean this um, unnecessary uh, satellite dish like thing when we push it it go oh, sorry here let me see if you can see there things go and boom it just goes and everything locks and things are locked so that's what uh, that's what this video was about uh, this is a super useful technique that will hopefully help you in the first lego league competitions or any other competitions that you choose to participate in uh, if you like this video please subscribe it helps us uh, we would love to connect with you and see you next time around thank you